I'm Ben from Fashion from One Idic Berry from Berry Science Lab. And today we will not film these Nafi Dance, but instead we will be looking at the intermediate. Oops, looks like the cameraman made a mistake. Intermediate value theorem. Now, by clicking on this video, you are obligated to learn with me, and I am obligated to teach you. Now, let us salute Professor Savor. Wait, I almost said Savorna. Oh, sorry, sorry. Now, let us salute Sir Isaac Newton for creating the beautiful subject of calculus. Now, get the freak out! All right. So, today, we will be looking at the intermediate value theory. What we'll be looking at today is you can read. First, let's take a graph. Now, let's take two points. Hmm. That goes for some very creative names. How about some very creative names, which are A and B. See, very creative, guys. Super creative. Let's say you have a function like this one. This is a fake function, by the way. A real function can be like this, but I don't care the reality of functions. Anyway, this is our function. And now that means that here would be f of a, and here would be f of b. The intermediate value theorem states somewhere over here in the middle, then there must be a number called C somewhere in here. Somewhere. It could be anywhere. I'm not sure where it is, but it has to be somewhere. And in this case, it would be right over here, which is about the middle between A and B. So A point 5. X squared minus 2. And what I will also give you is the example x squared plus 2. And you have to find proof that they have positive roots without typing in Desmos or Wolfram Alpha and checking the graph calculator. So, now we will go to Desmos and Wolfram Alpha. Just kidding! We will see you in the do now solution. I'll give you 5 seconds. 5 Four, three, two, you can count. Anyways, what, how can we prove really? Well, let's take an interval for x squared minus two. Let's say an interval from zero to two, if we can. So zero, first of all, let's check where that would be on the function. Well, uh, it seems it would be nowhere. Y literally cannot be zero here. So because then this would have to be negative and you know that's not possible. You know. So in order for it to be zero, it has to be negative, which can't happen. So what is this mysterious happenstance? Well, let's go to minus one and check things out. If we go to minus 1, then we get positive 1, and then minus 2. So, let's draw our graph, because now we know f of 1. That would be minus 1. So, let's just draw that. And f of 1 is minus 1. Minus 1, actually. f of minus 1 is minus 1. And if we check the same thing with plus, it's the same thing with plus. So, <clears throat> this is 1. 1 also is 1. So, they're the same. And now, what else can we predict over here? Well, we know that this has to be over here and over here at the same time. So that means like that. And it, it has x equals zero. What is the value of x equals zero? Well, it seems minus two. So minus two would look like this. If we 
predict it correctly and I can actually draw a parabola. And now you can see there are two possible routes. Again, we have no idea where, but they are roots because they touch zero. And that's the usefulness of the intermediate value theorem. Now let's check if x squared plus two had the same behavior. So x squared plus two, let's check the same thing. One will this time give us the answer three. You can add. So if we draw our beautiful, magnificent, totally straight coordinate plane again, and put three somewhere here, like here, and then you also have to have another point somewhere. And that other point will be at one. So it has to be at one and it uh, this y coordinate at three at the same time. Oh, and now let's check what negative one is doing. Well, negative one has to also be one. So well, negative one's output also has to be three. Well, why? Because you have minus one squared plus two. One plus two, three. You can add. And finally, the nail in the coffin. We check when x is zero, which it's right over here. So, when we check when x is zero, then we just get zero plus two equals two, not three. So, that means it has to be a 2 when it's a 0. So, that means it, it's going to look something like this. So, no, not like that. No support of. So, it's approximate, but it works, it does the job. And you can see, it never touches the ground. So there are no legitimate roots. So the solution to this problem is that you, sir, you have roots. You are the one like a tree. And you, on the other hand, you are also crab rock. You do not have a root.